everyone. Happy Sabbath. Yes, happy Sabbath. And welcome to the Shalom Vespers. You know, this is a special meeting that we have where we have a chance to listen to good music, to listen to some testimonies, and also a, spe a special message to welcome the Sabbath. Well, I'm glad to welcome you to our home today. Uh, we are originally from Brazil, but now we are working in Albania, and I am the pastor and the youth director for Albania. Um, this, we have prepared a special program to you. We we'll have some special guests from Albania. We have Restiola. Uh, she will share a little bit, a little bit about our country, and also Aldo, who will share a special testimony regarding his experience with Sabbath. Um, also, we have some special guests from Netherlands, Portugal, and also Hungary. They will bring a special songs to us. And also, um, we have Patricia from Poland. She's already she's now studying at Newbold, and she has prepared a message. Um, to you. So thank you for joining us and you can write in the chat where are you, from where are you watching this program and uh, you can also sh um, write some requests, special requests that we can pray for you during this during this weekend. So uh, I grew up in an Adventist family in Brazil and usually Friday was a very busy but also a special day, a day of preparation where we will work as a family to have the house clean, everything organized, special food to welcome the Sabbath. And as I grew up, we also had some uh, traditions to welcome the Sabbath on Friday night, usually involving songs, prayer. And now that I have my family, we are also um, trying to establish a few traditions regarding welcoming the Sabbath. And one of them is singing a special song. Let's sing with them, Clara. Yes. The, the Sabbath is a happy day, a happy day, a happy day. The Sabbath is a happy day. I love every Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, so I hope we have a blessed Sabbath. And as we say in Albania, Sabbat eluntur. Hello, Persian Deity from Albania. I don't know if you have heard about my country. Although we are small in territory and people, we have historical places, medieval castles and beautiful nature that can surprise all our visitors especially the Albanian Riviera, where you can see blue beaches and huge mountains at the same place. I'm from Korcha, and my city is surrounded by beautiful mountains. And many times when I look at them, I remember the words from David in Psalms. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. May you rest in this promise this coming Sabbath and all the days of your life. In God we are safe. Thank you. 
Hello everyone, my name is Aldo Zico and I am from Albania. I am currently studying theology at Newbold College. Today I would like to share my testimony with you. I am coming from the city of Korcha, southeast of Albania. I love my city and I have lived there a good part of my life with my family. My parents are Christian Orthodox. I was a Christian Orthodox too, till I was seven then. One day, my sister-in-law invited me to a church that offered English courses for free. I found it very interesting, especially for practicing English. The name of the church was Seventh-day Adventist Church. I had never heard of this name before and I didn't ask what it means either. I was so excited that I could have the possibility to practice English, which was for free. So, from that day and on, twice per week, I started to go to the courses. Meanwhile, the church pastor invited me to the youth programs during the week, on Friday evenings and Saturday mornings in the main church program. I was so curious to know about what was happening. All this was new for me. Most of the programs were in English, so sometimes they asked me to help with translation. I was more than happy to do so 
because my English was improving. Meanwhile, I was following different church programs and I started to make new friends and got to know new people. All these new things I learned made me think better of whatever I had heard before from my grandmother and from Orthodox Church teachings. The difference between both churches was huge. The more I was going to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the more the gap between both churches was growing in me, and more questions were coming to my mind. Later on, the pastor of the church announced that he would start Bible studies in groups. I thought to be part of those Bible studies, so in this way, my questions would get the answers I didn't have. One day, I took the decision to get baptized, but my family, especially one of my grandmothers, did not like the idea at all. She became furious, and she said that we are Christian Orthodox, and what I was going to do was a big mistake. She also suggested that I talk to the high priest of the Orthodox Church, hoping that maybe he could make me think clearer about my decision. I didn't want to upset her, so I went. I had many questions written down for him, and the first question I asked was about Sabbath, Saturday and Sunday worship. But to my surprise, my questions did not get an answer. He refused to answer, and he said that many people were going to ask him different questions, and he did not have the time to answer them all. Listen, he said. I do have an advice for you, Aldo. If you are going to get baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it will be very difficult to come back again to the Orthodox Church. According to him, I would regret and return one day, and to repay my sin, I had to go through difficult times. He said that if this happens, they would send me to Athos Peninsula for two years away from my family. And there, I had to do hard work. Only by doing these things, they would forgive me and accept me back. At the end of the meeting, I was even more convinced that I had taken the right decision to get baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. All of my family came to my baptism, except one of my grandmothers. Her heart was broken for betraying my family tradition. I felt sorry for her. Even I had tried to speak to her, the tradition was rooted so deep in her mind. Since my baptism, 20 years have passed. My life has changed a lot, for better, of course. This doesn't mean that I didn't have challenges. It means that I had Jesus to face them for me. The biggest challenge was when I moved to the capital city of Albania. I started to work in the dubbing department for the biggest TV channel in Albania. I thank God for this opportunity and I started to work, but I realized that my only free day was Sunday. So how could I keep the Sabbath, I asked myself. During the winter, I could work the second shift, which started directly after sunset around 4 p.m. But what about summertime? I prayed for many days and then I took a decision. I went to work and I asked for an appointment with my bosses. I had taken my decision for whatever it happens, I wanted to keep my Sabbath day holy. The wife of the boss was in the office. She offered me the chair and asked me to tell her why I needed to see her. Immediately, I told her that I am a Christian, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And according to the Bible, the day that I should worship God is Sabbath, which is Saturday. I told her that I couldn't work the day. I also told her that I was willing to work every weekday extra hours, on Sundays also, enough to have my Sabbath free. She smiled and answered me. Of course you can have your Sabbath day free, Aldo. Even though I am a Muslim, she said, I know that Saturday is the Sabbath day. I couldn't believe my ears of what I just heard. I thanked her, 
But most of all, I thank and praise God. He was with me. He provided for me. In that department, with hundreds of workers, I was the only worker with Saturday free. As you see, friends, God has blessed me in many ways. Now I am finishing studying theology. I have learned to be ready for more battles to win. If I turn my head and look back, I see how God led my way, how He has kept me by His hands and carried me through difficult times. There have been happening so many beautiful things in my life, and for the human mind, one might think, wow, what a coincidence, are you? But I know, coincidence is when God wants to be anonymous. This is the God to whom I am serving, the God which I am sure all of you have experienced in different moments of your lives. Out there, many people don't know Jesus yet. They are burdened with daily problems. They are people with lost hopes and with no future. I feel the responsibility to speak to them about Jesus and show them the light that I found in Him, that like me, they may say, I have been lost, but now I am found.
Our special guest today is Patricia. She's from Poland and she's now finishing her business. Um, she's graduating this year from business school. And uh, she loves to cook, to read, and to run. And she has prepared a special message to, to share with us today. Do you have faith that would endure anything? And I mean truly anything. I'm sure that some of you have been praying for something for quite some time now. And what happens if the Lord doesn't answer your prayers? I'm sure that some of you are also facing some kind of crisis in your life right now. We all face some crisis every now and then. But what does our faith look like in those moments? I've asked myself this question many times. Because every time a crisis came, my faith would struggle. And yes, I would pick myself up, I would get through it. But then something else happens and I seem to question why? Why is it happening? I seem to struggle to keep that confident faith in God. And today I would like to get to the bottom of that. Why is it that our faith seems to struggle in those situations and in those moments? Let's have a look at what the Bible tells us about those who trust the Lord. In the book of Jeremiah we can read that, Blessed are those who trust the Lord. Why are they blessed? Because they are like trees who are planted by the water. And even when the drought comes, these trees stay strong. Not only they stay strong, but they keep on producing good fruit and bearing green leaves. Now, this is a description of someone who trusts the Lord. Can you say that you're someone like that? Can I say that I'm someone like that? I have certainly failed to be like that, but... The Bible tells us this is who we can be. Do you want to be like that? Do you want to be someone who really has this unfailing trust in God no matter what comes our way? And why is it that we struggle with that so much in our lives? I think that the answer to this question lies in how much we know our God. When you choose to trust a r romantic partner or a business partner why do you choose that person often it is because we think that their character is trustworthy right now if we struggle to trust god perhaps the problem is with our knowledge of who he is and when difficult situations come what kind of questions do we tend to ask? Do we ask, is God really listening to us? Or is God really caring for us? Or maybe we don't fully trust that he wants what's best for us. And if that's so, if that's the reason, it seems like our knowledge of who he is isn't complete, isn't full. So let's have a look at what the Bible tells us about God and who he is and why he is trustworthy. In the book of Numbers, we read that God is not human, that he should lie. Not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? In essence, the Bible is telling us, God, if he promises something, he will certainly deliver. He's not like a human being that he should be, you know, changing his mind, that he should be saying one thing and doing something else. No, 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 that's not God. If God says something, he is someone who will fulfill it. And based on this promise, we can have a look into other verses who tells us what God is like. Other promises that we can claim to experience the peace and the confidence that we can have in God when crisis comes. And the Bible is telling us that God promises us the perfect peace if we keep our minds steadfast on Him. He also says that if we call out for insight and cry out for understanding, and if we look for it like we look for silver and search for it as for a hidden treasure. Now how many of us are searching and seeking God as if we would search for silver? 
But if we do, then the Lord will grant us the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God, which is the foundation of our trust. The Bible also is telling us that we should trust the Lord with our all hearts and not lean on our own understanding and in all our ways submit to him. And then he will make our paths straight. Do we really seek him and do we really look for him with all our hearts? The Bible is also telling us that the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. That if we look for wisdom and pray for wisdom, he will give us that wisdom. There are so many amazing and beautiful promises to be claimed. But can we claim these promises if we don't know who God is? Can we claim them if we doubt that he can deliver? Can we claim these promises if we truly don't understand the character of our God? Can we then confidently come to him and tell him, Lord, I ask for your wisdom and I ask for your direction and I trust you with all my life. If we don't trust his character and that he wants what's best for us, and most importantly, that he wants what's best for our eternal life. I truly encourage all of you to have a look at what the Bible has to say about our amazing God. Get to know him. God never asks us to trust him without knowing him first. He never asks us to surrender all our lives and desires into his hands without showing us who he is and that he is trustworthy. It would be actually quite silly to trust someone that we don't know. God knows that and he really wants us to know him first when we have this knowledge, when we can confidently say, God is not a human being, he is so trustworthy and he really wants what's best for me, then we will experience all of those promises in our lives. We will confidently claim these promises because we will know whom in whom we trusted. Thank you, Patricia, for this special message. And I want to remind you that next Friday evening, at the same time, you can watch this special program from our division, uh, Shalom Vespers. Next Sabbath will be hosted by Hungary Group, from the, our youth friends from Hungary. And they, has, they have prepared a special song for you now. And I want to thank you for being with us during this uh, evening, special evening. May the Lord bless you and have a special and blessed Sabbath. Milyen úton járok, sokszor mégsem értem, merre tart az életem. A fájdalom, a bánat megbénítja a lelkem, és minden oly reménytelen. De az Úr a szívem mélyén, Segítek, meg védelek, ha gyenge vagy, az én erőm megtart majd. Átviszlek tüzön, a folyó nem morít el, a hegytető. Okay.
short inspirational talks we are trying to focus on our great God. See you every Friday evening for this international program. Shalom Vespers.